If you've ever had a list of property owners, cash buyers, or even agents that you've wanted to call, but the list is too overwhelming to hand dial, you've come to the right place. In today's episode here on Batch TV, we'll be breaking down how you can bring in a spreadsheet of data into Batch Dialer so you can start giving them a call as soon as possible. Check this out. So here we are in my batch dialer account. We're going to jump right into it and make this quick as I've had a lot of questions come up recently in the batch community wondering how people can bring in a spreadsheet of contacts they have. Maybe they don't have a batch leads account that they can connect and get integrated to push that over and they just have this spreadsheet of information they've had sitting there that they really want to call. So we're going to go over that and then some of the things that the system has outlined there for you so you really understand and what the system will do if it runs into duplicates and things like that. So let's get right into it. There's really only four things you need to do to start dialing in Batch Dialer, which is nice. Things like creating a voicemail, setting up your contacts, bringing those in, which is the thing we're going over today, creating a campaign, and getting phone numbers. If you have those four things, and technically you only need three of them, you can start making calls. So I'm gonna upload this list and show you how easy it is to make calls. If you end up having questions about how to do anything else within Batch Dialer, you can always go to the Help Center by clicking on the B in the bottom left or dropping a comment down below. So let's head over to my contact section within my menu and go to the contact list area. I'll break down what all of this is being displayed here in a moment, but you'll click on import contacts in the top right hand corner. I'll show you what you need to have kind of set up or formatted in your file, how that needs to be laid out here too. But it brings you to a page where you can either drag and drop your file if you recently downloaded it to your computer, or you can click on this box and find it in your downloads. Once again, your file needs to be in Excel or CSV format. I'll show you an easy way that you can download something into CSV or Excel through Google Sheets here if you need to see. But I'm gonna go ahead and click on this box and grab a list I recently downloaded and it's just called list one. So I'm gonna open this up. Imagine this is some sort of pre-foreclosure list or maybe agent list that I need to call through and start conversations on. And it'll bring you to a layout page. The system does a pretty good job of auto-recognizing your file as long as it's kind of formatted for the most part pretty properly. But you wanna double check that the system didn't make any mistakes. The source fields, is coming from your spreadsheet. It's looking at each column of data, and we do have data blurred here for privacy purposes, but you'll be able to see everything on your own screen, of course. But the system is going through and matching up your source fields or source columns and matching it with the destination, which is Batch Dialer. So first name from my spreadsheet would be matched with first name in batch dialer. If you ever see it's made a mistake, then just open up the destination field side and find the coordinating field that matches up with your source field or column. So the system did a good job of matching up the mailing address, the property address, all of the phone numbers. Your files do need to be skip traced or have phone numbers on them already to actually bring them in and start making calls. And after it's been matched, you'll click next. Now, if you don't know how to have your file moved over to a different format or downloaded into something different, this is just an empty Google spreadsheet that I have, and I don't have Excel on my computer, but you can actually go into Google, type in Google Spreadsheets or Google Sheets, and have an account and open up a brand new blank slate sheet. And in the very top left-hand corner, there's a file button. You can import a list, so maybe you are using Excel and you need to know how to download it, and or maybe you're trying to use Google Sheets more, you can import that list here, which is really easy to do. All you have to do is click on import and find it in your computer downloads, kind of that same thing. Or if you have it in Drive, you can do that too. But same idea, you would just find it in your downloads. I already have this in Google Sheets, but just to show you, and you would just click import data. 
So if you have something you want to bring into Google Sheets, so you can download it as CSV or Excel, click on file, make sure you name your spreadsheet too in the top left. So click on file, click on import, and then I would just go to your uploads and find that in your computer downloads. When it's imported, making sure that everything is nice and separated, this is the format the system is looking for in your spreadsheet, is everything being separated into separate columns. First name, last name is separate. The property address needs to be separated by the street, city, state, and zip code. It won't import properly if everything's smushed together into one little box. So watch out for that. That's gonna be a big thing that I see people run into but looking for that to be nice and separated. After you've looked over your file and it looks good, click file again. Let's name the list real quick. List example, and you can download it. And in this download option, you could download it as Excel SX or CSV, which is what I do every single time. And when you do that, you can now bring it into Batch Dialer. So if you didn't have what I already had downloaded as a CSV file in my computer downloads, go through and import that into a blank Google Sheet. Just type that in your computer browser, Google Sheets, and you should be able to log in with your email, create that blank slate, click import, and then download it into the format of your choosing. It needs to be Excel or CSV. So once that's downloaded, bring it into Batch Dialer and it will bring you to that mapping page that I'm showing here. So as you're matching things up and taking your time, it's always a good idea if you're not super savvy with your spreadsheets to just have it up and double check that you're matching each column properly with Batch Dialer. And once done, once we're good with double checking, click next at the bottom, name your list. We're just gonna keep it named list one. Maybe we'll add the date here as well. If you've already created a campaign, you can absolutely add it here. You need to eventually add a contact list to your campaign so you can actually call people on it, but we're going to leave it alone for now because you can add it later too. This right here is something there's a lot of questions about, so I'm going to break this down before bringing this into our account. So the system will never allow you to have duplicate phone numbers in Batch Dialer. Nobody can have the same phone number. So the system is saying that if it runs into that scenario, what do you want to happen? By default, the system has it on keep old, which the more I've played around with this, the more I would continue to just recommend keeping it on the original list. And I'll break down what this means. So I would just normally leave that alone, click submit and get your data in there and not to worry too much about this. But I'm gonna break down each option. So if you chose reject, let's start at the top here. And it does have pretty good commentary, but I'm going to show you a visual. So let's say that six months ago, we uploaded a list, list number one. And six months later today, we're going to upload a new list that we have, list number two. So our original list that we uploaded, list number one, six months ago, it had a contact name Alejandra on it and her phone number was 214555. This is an example phone number, by the way. So we uploaded that six months ago, and now we're importing, let's say, list number two. We don't really realize this. It's been so long, it's six months later, but Jose has that same phone number, 214555. The system is asking you that if that ever happens when you're importing another list, do you want to reject that person? Do you want to keep the old number or keep new? So with reject selected, what would happen is that Jose would be rejected. He would not be imported. Alejandra would keep that number on her contact and it would reject Jose completely. Any of his additional phone numbers completely would not be included in the import. Now, if we chose keep old, which is the recommended and default one, that would keep that original phone number on Alejandra. That's our original list. And it would still import Jose, but this phone number 214555 just wouldn't be included on his contact. Having the same phone number pop up on different lists could be a spouse, it could be maybe multiple properties owned by the same LLC or trust that has that same phone number attached. So 
we would keep it on the original contact. Maybe we've already called Alejandra. We would want to keep that phone number on that contact so that we could keep that history there rather than taking it off of her and putting it onto the new contact. Which brings me to the last option, which is keep new. If we chose keep new, 214-555 would actually be taken off of Alejandra and it would be placed onto the new contact that we're uploading today. So it really comes down to you. Maybe it's the same list, but you skip traced it again and got updated data and you want the new information, or maybe you just want to keep what was there originally, as you've probably already had conversations or called those numbers originally months ago. That's what the system has on there by default, but just to show you what the system is going to do as it won't allow any duplicate phone numbers. So one person is going to be able to own it on their account. It's either going to be added to somebody or taken off of somebody, or they're going to be rejected altogether. If you guys have questions about that, be sure to join the community. I can always clarify things or just drop a comment down below this video. But after you choose your option, there's a couple other things, mostly for visibility here, just to let you know that no duplicates will make it into the system. You can scrub your company DNC, which I would do. These are people that you've already called in batch dialer and have specifically marked as do not call. So people you and your team have already reached out to that said, don't reach back out to me, essentially. It'll scrub litigators. It's up to you if you want to scrub the federal DNC list. And if you want to scrub mobile phone numbers for any reason, you can do that too. When you're ready, click submit. And I'm going to do keep old for this because I do like the idea of keeping it on my original contact from previous list. And the last thing I want to share here is your import results. So after that's been submitted, it'll take a couple moments for the system to bring up your successful kind of pop-up here and break down the results of that file being imported. So we'll wait for that to load. So it brought us to our contact list page and it brings up a status log. So total leads uploaded, that's the amount of people that were on your spreadsheet. Duplicates, this is actually talking about if the same phone number is on the same sheet. So on my list number one, I'm going to move this here, but it basically would be two people or multiple people on the same list having the same phone number. Once again, this can happen by spouses being on the same list or even multiple properties owned by the same company. So duplicates can't be imported or both of them can't be imported. The person that will take priority is the person that's at the top of the list. So this person, Deborah, right here, is the person that would actually take that number because she's kind of closer to the top of the list there. So that is what a duplicate in the same list means. It's different from what we discussed earlier. Existing contacts, those are people you already imported. So if you're seeing this and it's taking up a large portion of the spreadsheet, you've already previously imported a list with those people on it and it can't be re-imported essentially. Misformed leads, this is when you have missing information. What I see the most is when maybe you skip traced a list and there were a few people that didn't have any phone numbers. So you didn't realize, but some of the people didn't have any information returned, any phone numbers at all. That would be a misformed lead or anybody in your spreadsheet that maybe didn't have a full address or anything that was missing essentially. And some of these last ones, anyone on the federal DNC that it found in your list and just overall how many leads were imported. Now, last thing to cover here on your contacts page, it'll always show you an overview of the total contacts that were brought in, how many mobile phone numbers were on that list, landlines, any litigators, DNC numbers, and how many campaigns you have it attached to. You also have a health column, which will always be 100 when it's a fresh list, and the health will go down if you start calling the list a lot. So if you're calling through it multiple times and not giving it much of a break, you will see the health depreciate. The health will come back up when you step away from it for a few weeks and just giving it a, a bit of a break. You'll also see a age of the list and then round. So how many times have you completely gone through that contact list? After you've imported your list, which you can always find out more information on, you can download the CSV here and anytime you need to assign it to a campaign, even from this page. But remember to start calling, you need to have a campaign set up 
and you need to have phone numbers in here. We have a full guide of how to get started with dialing here on Batch TV or within the Help Center if you go to the B that you can learn about in depth. But to start calling, it really is as easy as once everything's set up, you can click on the phone button at the top of the screen and choose your campaign to join. This one right here is a preview dialer. We have preview and predictive. So there's a manual dialer that helps you click through one person at a time and really take the time you need. And then a predictive, which is the power dialer, or automatic dialer, if you will. Just for example, with this preview dialer, this manual dialer, I can call people back manually. I can type numbers out, but I can also just click on next lead and start working on my contact list. Once again, you'll need to have that uploaded and we could get really into the weeds, but we do have additional resources. Really wanted this guide to just deep dive into what will happen with your spreadsheet, what the system is looking for, what's going to happen with duplicates and how it should be formatted. If this video helped you, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Drop a comment down below if you have any questions at all or put an idea down on what you want to see us break down next here on Batch TV. Last but not least, find the link in the description to join the community where you can connect with tons of amazing people in every market you can imagine. And you can send me a message if you need a little bit more clarity. We'll see you guys next time.